Saturday of the 29th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has freed you from the law of sin and death. For what the law, weakened by the flesh, was powerless to do, this God has done. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for the sake of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the righteous decree of the law might be fulfilled in us, who live not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh are concerned with the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit with the things of the Spirit. The concern of the flesh is death, but the concern of the Spirit is life and peace. For the concern of the flesh is hostility toward God. It does not submit to the law of God, nor can it. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the One who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the One who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through His Spirit that dwells in you. The Word of the Lord The Responsorial Psalm The response is, Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. He said to them in reply, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were greater sinners than all other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 people who were killed when the tower at Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There once was a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard, and when he came in search of fruit on it but found none, he said to the gardener, For three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none, so cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. The first reading comes from Romans 8, 1 to 11. In this passage, Paul contrasts the ways of the flesh and the ways of the spirit. The flesh, remember, is not his physical body, but rather his fleshiness, his earthiness, that which drags him down and causes him to sin, what St. Augustine would call concupiscence. The spirit is not to be understood as the Gnostics did, 
that which is totally spiritual, that which is ethereal, but rather the spirit is that which is vivified by the spirit of God, love, goodness, willingness to sacrifice of self. If we live according to the flesh, we'll suffer the consequences, death. But if we live according to the spirit, then we will rise with Christ because the spirit who rose Jesus from the dead will also raise us up. The gospel is from Luke 13, one to nine. Jesus has been talking about interpreting the signs and he speaks about certain signs that there were certain accidents, people died, certain people executed. And he says, don't think that you're better than they are. Don't read the signs the wrong way, that they were punished for their sinfulness and therefore it must mean that you're not sinful if you're not being punished in the same way. He says that everybody is going to face judgment, each in his own time. And then he tells the parable of a fig tree. The gardener has been nourishing the fig tree, hoeing around it, and it hasn't borne fruit. Now the owner of the fig tree says it hasn't borne fruit in three years. We have to realize that it's not three years from the planting of the fig tree. According to Jewish law, the fig tree was planted in the first three years, nothing was harvested at all because you had to let it stay on the tree to be able to strengthen the tree. The fourth year, whatever was harvested was dedicated to the Lord. So it's only at the fifth year that you begin counting. Now, the owner has come to the tree the fifth, sixth, and seventh year. Number seven is the perfect number. If the fig tree is not bearing fruit in seven years, then it's not gonna bear fruit. What does the gardener say? Give it another year. We'll hoe around it, we'll manure it, If it doesn't bear fruit this next year, then it'll be cut down. So the fact that God gives us time to convert, the fact that we haven't been called to account for our sinfulness yet, doesn't mean it's not gonna happen. We should always be ready. And the patience of God should not be misinterpreted as God not caring. Sooner or later, we will have to give an account for what we are and what we've done. And may God bless us.